Namaskar and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our show Perspective where we bring you detailed analysis of key national and international issues. Today we're going to take a look at uh, the sex ratio figures in India. Now the latest National Family and Health Survey that is NFHS 5 fact sheets of which were released recently has indicated a positive growth in the sex ratio in India. As seen from the NFHS 5 data, for the first time since independence, the number of women in India have surpassed the number of men, which is unprecedented. India now has 1,020 women for every 1,000 men. During NFHS 3, conducted in 2005-06, the sex ratio was 1,000-1,000, and in NFHS 4, done in 2015-16, it declined to 991 to 1,000. Now, the NFHS 5 figures have also shown that the sex ratio at birth improved from 919 in 2015-16 to 929 in 2019-20. These statistics are a significant moment in India's socio-economic and demographic transformation story, and other findings of NFHS also convey a similar message. In today's episode, we will discuss and analyze all aspects of these figures, how this was achieved during all the past seven to eight years and what all it needed to be done to sustain this movement further as well and the other aspects of uh, these uh, statistics and figures. And for more on this, we joined by a distinguished panel of experts. Let me first introduce them to you. Beginning with, we have with us in the studio today, Ms. Uh, Poonam Mutreja. She is Executive Director of Population Foundation of India. Welcome, ma'am, to Sunset Television. We're also joined by Dr. Aprajita Chattopadhyay, Professor at IAPS uh, Mumbai and Mr. Shankar Agarwal, former secretary with the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Uh, welcome uh, both of you as well. Let me begin with you, uh, Professor Charupadhyay, and let's start by going a bit deeper into those numbers which I mentioned during my introduction. If you could uh, give us a bit of a brief as to what are we looking at in terms of data uh, from the NFHS 5 survey and uh, what's the interpretation? Um, thank you very much for having me here and uh, discussing on a very pertinent topic. Um, I have two very clear points here. Number one is about the overall sex ratio, and the second is on sex ratio at birth. Overall sex ratio, definitely whatever you have uh, spoken just now, NFHS indicates improvement. But we should not uh, derive to a... a very happy conclusion that um, things are, uh, we have done. I mean, uh, we have done enough. Because I think census is the right um, statistics that can give you overall sex ratio. NFHS is meant for something else. And throughout NFHS, it is not just NFHS 5, NFHS 4, as well as NFHS 3, uh, shows that overall sex ratio is at a higher side compared to census. Okay. And it is meant for women child uh, health indicators. So we should not come to a very strong conclusion that it is beyond housing. Yes, I believe that next census will show some improvement, but it, it may not be a thousand or uh, beyond thousand. Okay. And the other aspect is about sex ratio at birth. It is a very important indicator uh, from a gender perspective. And usually it hovers around 109 to 110 male births or boys per 100 girls in India. And NFHS though shows a bit improvement in this respect also, mm -hmm. at birth. but we, again, we should not draw to a conclusion that we have achieved everything because normal sex ratio at birth is generally 105. Okay. We, are, we are in a very, uh, uh, I mean, gender... Um, discordant side, and we should continue our program in a full-fledged manner to improve the status of women. And there are many other aspects okay. in which we can improve their... Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come to those aspects as well, but let me bring in uh, Mr. Shankar Agarwal here also. Mr. Agarwal, would you agree uh, what uh, Professor Chattopadhyay is pointing out, that yes, these numbers do indicate a positive development... Uh, but we should not be content, uh, uh, you know, with the uh, with uh, with the fact, and uh, you know, uh, start uh, patting ourselves on the back that yes, we have achieved uh, what we set out to achieve. We will have to uh, sustain the momentum here, and we'll have to look at the larger figures also coming in from the uh, se next census. Uh, I would uh, like to use the word complacent and rather than 
saying that to content it. Mm-hmm. You see, though these numbers are very preliminary and indicative only, but these numbers do indicate a very, very significant trend. And that is that our sex ratio is improving in favor of women, number one. And even at the birth, things are improving. And that means what? That there is awareness, and a positive awareness about the girl child. Instead of taking them to be a liability, now people have started taking care of them because they feel they are not liability and they may be an asset. And if asset can be given some value, some mm-hmm. additional value, they can prove to be an extremely good and valuable asset for the society. Okay. Second, it also indicates that the level of education is also improving among the society. So that means awareness. And secondly, the education. And third, it also indicates that the measures and the policies undertaken by various government have also fructified in this positive direction. Okay. We should not be complacent on these numbers, but yes, it's an occasion to be happy. Okay, okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at uh, what needs to be done there as well. But let me first bring in uh, Ms. Uh, Poonam Mutreja here. Ms. Mutreja, you know, would you agree, and, and it, it would be right to say, that the tide is finally turning when we are talking about uh, the sex ratio. Uh, 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 and obviously, uh, complacency uh, should not be allowed to set in. But your interpretation of these numbers uh, from the fact that uh, there has been a positive moment. There's no doubt that uh, we are seeing a positive trend. I won't say turn the tide, but we are seeing a positive trend. Mm -hmm. Uh, The numbers that we have seen um, uh, at birth, which is uh, compared to the last NFHS from 2000, uh, sorry, from 919, we've reached uh, uh, 929, uh, Mm -hmm. which is a good trend if this is correct figures. We have been cautioned by both IIPS, the director also, James, has made a statement today, as well as the additional secretary, health, the day the data came out, that we'll have to wait for the... Um, census data, as you also pointed out and has been pointed out. Uh, in a country, see, the reason I am, um, I am waiting more for the census data and it's then that I will say this is a definite trend mm-hmm. is because India is a country where there's huge sun preference still. Yes, there have been some good schemes. Um, there have been, you know, the slogan, Beti Padao, Beti Bachao, has been a very positive slogan. Then the Ministry of Women and Child Development, where Mr. Shankar uh, uh, Agarwal was the secretary, has taken a lot of measures. There's no denying that, and positive measures do always have positive impact. Mm-hmm. So I am not uh, discounting that there must be some impact, but there's also uh, the fact that we have sun preference in India. And, you know, as fertility has declined in India, sex ratios have gone adverse because people are having fewer children, but they want definitely a son. Okay. And sometimes more than one son. All right? So in a society like this, I would love to declare patriarchy has been smashed and sun preference has gone if... We can prove through census, which is a very robust data. So is NFHS, but NFHS is not designed for capturing sex ratios um, fully because it is a household-based survey, Mm -hmm. while census is a population-based survey. survey. And as Professor James, the director of IAPS, said in a statement in the last few days, they, because it's a household survey, they could not capture men in the army, you know, armed forces. They could not capture uh, people living in hostels. I, people in the army, and it's mainly men. Mm-hmm. People in hostels, then institutions, including uh, people who live uh, on um, 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 uh, um, uh, on the streets. Mm-hmm. So homeless people. Now these are primarily men. So I think somewhere there. Okay. Uh, the population base, we've got um, uh, confused okay. or the, the numbers have got confused. So let's wait for the, uh, uh, the census, uh, data. census data. But in the meantime, I would like to say that 
we should be encouraged if this trend has started we should make even more efforts indeed in value of the girl child we need to keep girls in uh, we, we need to girl, keep girls not just in school we need to take our girls to colleges higher education and we need to create jobs mm -hmm. and create a climate and environment a value for girl will also come why do people have boys they say when we are old they will look after us mm -hmm. they will look after incomes two other points i'd like to mention which could have uh, which definitely would have led to a positive trend you know the aspirations of indians have changed mm -hmm. especially thanks to the media you all you know you're reaching the media dark areas where now the other half knows how the better half lives, lives. and they've seen women they've seen empowered women they've seen women contributing significantly second i'd like to say that in india uh, girls having been given the opportunities for education mm -hmm. have done better in many cases than boys and parents are very encouraged and society is very encouraged with that indeed and and and, and the real empowerment of women uh, or the girl child is something which will go a long way yes. you made those very important points but uh, one point i'll i'll take uh, from what you said and i'll i'll bring it to uh, professor chatopadhyay here with with the tfr uh, the tfr is 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 coming down that's what uh, the nfhs 5 survey also says and uh, from uh, uh, what i gather from uh, ms mutrija's point of view that uh, can uh, you know uh, sort of erode the uh, positive uh, you know measures or positive steps in terms of that data which we are looking at uh, which, which which we are already looking at right now is that possible how how will we tackle that also yeah thanks for this uh, very uh, interesting question uh, we have published a paper in 2012 where we have really indicated that with fertility decline um, there is a huge chance of uh, sex selection and distortion of the sex at birth because if you look at the uh, states where fertility is actually declining now they all have <clears throat> some preference so they want to fit at least one son within two children um and your deeper analysis indicates that sex ratio at birth in india worsened mm -hmm. with wealth women's education urban space women's land holding and if the first birth is a girl these are really some important points to be considered at the time of policy making because it has not happened in southeast asian countries they were already socioeconomically developed well educated their um, health system was more structured and regularized so mm -hmm. they implemented the things very effectively in our case our diversity is huge cultural differences are huge and the bigger states um, if uh, goes to i mean uh, adopt the sun preference uh, in a stronger way we really uh, need to worry in the next 10 15 years okay and um, possible um, way out are number one it has already been discussed i strongly believe that uh, your teaching starts from family and school we need a huge um, improvement in the school books even now also we see that police is a man doctor is a man nurse is a girl so it it hits the young minds mm -hmm. Uh, whether we have discussed the contribution of women in stem in pure science whether we have ever discussed in history books that how many women contributed for freedom, freedom fights or in our earlier history so uh, it helps young minds to shape their uh, own mental construct about okay. gender seeing their parents and getting clues from the Uh, basic books at the school level okay second is that girls do have some responsibility it is i i believe that it is not man versus woman uh girls need to understand that it is they are not um under the umbrella of three c's that is caring cooking and cleaning mm -hmm. they need to stand on their own feet so why urban women are not working because work participation in urban india among women is one of the lowest in the world so we need to create a conducive environment to help them to come out of the house and okay. contribute in the economic sector 
Okay. And media can play a tremendous role. And I, I, I must add here that if you look at the district level uh, media penetration, you will be surprised to see that there are still many districts in India that has, that has no access to any kind of media. Mm -hmm. Right? And <clears throat> obviously, uh, we need to talk about the legal provisions that our government has already given mm -hmm. to us. We don't know that. We don't know that we can keep our family name. We don't know that women can be a family head. We don't know that we can perform worships, rituals. So these things, media... More awareness. Can, uh, yeah, awareness is okay. extremely important, especially through movies and okay. advertising. Okay, Th those, those are uh, important points there. And, and if we have to look at it holistically, Mr. Agarwal, what both, uh, you know, Professor Chattopadhyay and uh, Ms. Mutreja are also referring to is... Uh, uh, the overall socio-economic situation, uh, you know, looking at all factors, social, economical, cultural, uh, and, uh, and, and starting from uh, the word go, when uh, Professor Chattopadhyay is referring to, uh, you know, the school education or uh, even the environment at home. Yeah. Again, there's no doubt that if you really want to add value to women and to girls, and if you want to really empower them, the first and the foremost step is to empower them with good quality education. Unfortunately, in this country, our emphasis has been on literacy and not on education. And if we are able to impart good quality skills and good quality education to our girls, they, as uh, uh, Ma'am uh, Mutreja said, mm -hmm. they would be extremely valuable to the society, there's no doubt. And when I say valuable to the society, they'll be valuable to the household as well, to the family as well. So first and foremost is we got to focus on good quality education. What is happening today in the name of education, the entire focus is on acquisition of knowledge and not on application of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge can always be acquired through books and through a whole lot of other things. But we should be able to apply that education. We should be able to add something new to the existing pool of knowledge. And that can be done only by improving the quality of education. Okay. Second is to take care of their health. We got to emphasize on the health of every girl, child and girl. The moment we do that, once we are ensuring that they have got the right kind of physical and the mental development, they will have immense, immense potential. Mm -hmm. And as somebody said, the job opportunity. You see, today, not many women are finding good quality jobs, suitable jobs for them in the urban area as well as in the rural area. Mm -hmm. We got to create a situation where they can work without fear and with comfort, number one. And number two, we must create good quality jobs and not like only salai, bunai, karai kind of thing, very low level kind of like a nursing matter. But today, if you talk to any average girl child of class five to class eight okay. and ask them what they would like to become when they grow, most of them would say they would like to be either a doctor or a teacher or a police officer or an administrative officer or an engineer or a scientist. They would like to be even the, the pilots. Hmm. And those they are the like aspirations which, which, which should be fulfilled. Absolutely. So that means things are changing. The mindset is changing. Now it is our job to ensure that what they are aspiring for is given to them and an environment is created for their development. Okay. okay. And that can be done. It's, it's a little difficult task, but surely it can be done. Indeed, uh, you know, these uh, tasks uh, seemingly are difficult because these involve the society at large and, uh, you know, diverse cultures as well and, and uh, tackling various, uh, you know, hurdles there. But, Ms. Mutrija, two aspects which I could gather. One is providing an enabling environment to uh, the girl child so that she can prosper, she can learn and she can work uh, and stand shoulder to shoulder with the boys or with the men as well. The other aspect, as Professor Chattopadhyay pointed out, is awareness as well. A woman, a, a woman or a girl should also be aware as to what her rights are uh, in the society 
in the in that uh, country and economically as well not only uh, you know uh, socially so while we have school education our school education has to include an empowerment approach making girls feel confident of their future their capabilities <clears throat> abilities when girls don't have why do girls leave schools one reason they leave is that they do not have toilets in schools toilets have been created but just creating a toilet is not enough maintenance the minute a girl reaches menarche there is a good chance she will leave school because there isn't the menstrual hygiene management so we have to look at all these details mm -hmm. so young girls retain them in school then we have to work on ensuring that early marriage doesn't take place we have to eliminate it you know one fifth of girls in india today still get married early below the legal age mm -hmm. which means they also drop out of school or they've dropped out of school so they are sent uh, to so we have to create enabling environment as professor chatupadhyay said including teaching gender in, in uh, gender equality in our textbooks mm -hmm. and it is not a rocket science to do that and it is very important we not only teach our more than the girls we need to teach the um, boys boys because it's only when we change the boys mindset we bring them up so badly socially we are a country that brings up our children our boys so differently we keep telling the girls what कुछ नहीं करो ये नहीं करो स्माइल नहीं करो बाहर नहीं जाओ साइकिल नहीं चलाओ बट द बॉयज वी डोंट से एनी थिंग टू देम इवन वेन आर बॉयज गो एंड रेप एंड टीज गर्ल्स एंड ईव टीज द फैमिलीज डोंट ट्राई एंड प्रोटेक्ट दैम सो वी हैव टू सोसाइटी हैज टू चेंज माइंड सेट्स टू वर्ड्स थिंकिंग ऑफ इक्वालिटी फॉर गर्ल्स एंड बॉयज एंड दिस इज समथिंग द गवर्नमेंट कैन डू ओनली फॉर आस द गवर्नमेंट इज पुट पॉलिसीज इन प्लेस द गवर्नमेंट इज पुट लॉज इन प्लेस द रूल्स इन प्लेस इट इज फॉर द सोसाइटी एंड इंडिविजुअल्स टू फॉलो देम एग्जैक्टली सो वन प्लेस अगेन आई विल एग्री विद प्रोफेसर चटोपाध्याय द मीडिया हैज अ बिग रोल टू change social norms question social norms change behavior and i'm afraid you know if you look at a lot of the serials they are so regressive in india across television channels and they make a woman look like a nagin is the word i would like to use and they show women as people who just dress up wear lots so stereotyping, stereotyping is something which need to be done no, away with women who dress up and sit at home and have no way to go but the kitchen so we need to change those stereotypes we need to create opportunities for our women to be able to work you know what is the biggest challenge for women even if there are jobs women are leaving the workforce mm -hmm. because they of their caregiving role they are responsible for not only giving birth to the child they are responsible of taking care of the child fully the grandmother the mother the mother in law where is the role of the men where are our men taking responsibility they cannot take biological responsibility of having a child but they can take the caregiving role and finally you know whether it is family planning or anything everything is seen a woman's burden mm -hmm. in fact even maintaining patri patriarchy is seen as the ch ch social norms so what we really have to do is have men and women see each other as partners mm -hmm. and parents have to be educated and the school teachers so we need a massive you know if we could deal with covid by changing social norms and behavior the way we've been able to do Indeed. could you have imagined that indians will who spit all over the place will be wearing masks and not spitting they, you know or doing so many other behavior change so, so it has given us the an opportunity to uh -huh. change social norms and do behavior change and do a lot of education on health on gender equality and all of the things that we can then achieve okay okay indeed uh, you know uh, those are uh, very important points there which you made uh, mr matricha and uh, uh, mr agarwal as well as uh, professor chatopadhyay i thank all of you very much uh, these are really significant aspects uh, as our panelists were pointing out you know these statistics uh, which we are looking at from nfhs5 uh, survey clearly do indicate a lot of a positive uh, momentum in terms of uh, you know the sex ratio aspect or in terms of bringing uh, that gender equality which we are talking about uh, 
but uh, the complacency cannot be allowed to set in, as our panelists were referring to. And a lot more work needs to be done, uh, starting from the word go, from, uh, uh, from the base unit, that is, uh, from our houses, uh, from our families, uh, from our schools, textbooks as well, uh, so that it is not just about these figures which we look at, uh, but also in real life, uh, the women are seen equal to men as well. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.